Hey everyone, my name is Chelsea. Welcome to Little Mountain Ranch. Welcome to my basement. I'm really happy to have you here with us today where we are going to stock our pantry, which is right back over here, up with all of this food here that we bought at Costco. If you would like to see the full Costco haul video, I'll put a link for it up here and down in the show notes for you. We took part in the Three Rivers Pantry Challenge for the months of January and February. We didn't go to the grocery store during that entire time. We also didn't eat out, buy any fast food, any corner store food or anything like that during that entire period. So Dan and I are going to update you in this video with the things that we learned throughout that process and what we're going to be doing differently moving forward as far as keeping our pantry stocked and our regular grocery shops. We're also going to take a wander down to the barn and I'm gonna catch you up on how the lambs are doing. And then when we're finished in the pantry, we'll head over into my grow room over here and I'll show you what seeds I have started. One of the other things we'll talk about when we're in the pantry is how much of each thing we actually consumed during the entire pantry challenge. And that's actually the thing that I was most interested to learn throughout this whole entire thing. So I'm very curious. The lighting in our pantry is terrible. So I do apologize for that, but I wanted to give you kind of a quick pan of where we're at. Um, I'll mention that Dan does like keeping all of the shelves faced. So it looks like there's a lot more in here than there is, but there's still quite a bit left. So this is the canning pantry where we have the biggest gaps are we don't have any chicken broth left or turkey broth. We've used most of the stew beef, most of the ground beef, but we still do have lots of canned chicken and canned pork left, which is fantastic. We've also used most of the peaches. In fact, this is the most peaches we have ever actually had left at this time of year, but we've used all of the canned cherries. We also used all of the canned beans. These I replenished when was that? About four weeks ago now. So these were all things that I've canned up this winter. Same with the cranberry sauce. We used all of the cranberry sauce uh, and I just canned up a whole bunch of new cranberry sauce. Apple pie fillings all gone and then we have tons of the tomato products that are gone up here as well. I like to have canned products left in my pantry at kind of like September, October. And so I'm feeling really good about this because we definitely have six months left of food in here. Lots more holes in here. This is my husband, Dan, for everyone who's new. Hello. He'll be chatting in a second. But we have um, honey all gone, except for a couple of jars of our own honey. I do have some honey out in the shop to process. I just need to wait till it gets a little bit warmer. Dan actually sent me a screenshot from his trip to town today and it was minus 29 degrees on the way to town. So still very cold. We have lots of maple syrup left, which is great. Lots of toothpaste. We used all of my favorite brand of tea, which is the four o'clock tea, but we still do have lots of the twinings left. So we used, how many of these did you say? Four, so we used two a month. So we used two of these a month. And during our Costco haul, people were asking how we use them up or how we get by big tins like this and then have them not go bad in the fridge because we also buy our mayonnaise in large uh, containers like this. But with using as much as we do, what we do is we open one of these up, fill up plastic squeeze bottles, restaurant style plastic squeeze bottles. And one of these will fill four of those and then we use those up in a couple weeks. So we, we don't have an issue with them going bad. What else? Oh, I'm glad to see that we have another sesame oil because I used the last of my one upstairs. So that one can come upstairs with us when we go up. What is this? Uh, it's your homemade vinegar. Oh, right. I forgot <laughs> I made that. <laughs> Looks like we used all our chipotle. We used a lot of the crackers. I thought we used all of them actually. So I'm happy to see there's a couple boxes left. I just would have thought they would have been around here somewhere, like by the chip, by the crackers. We actually used a ton of the nuts. We had nut mix quite a bit during the pantry challenge. Does you know how many Is bags we right? used? He says we had 44 cans of mushroom. There's five left in there. How so many? 39 cans of mushrooms. Oh my goodness. <laughs> 39? That's yeah. insane. Oh my gosh. But I guess we use, when we make a batch of chili, we use usually four or six. We started with eight liters of honey. Okay. So. We used five of, I think they're one and a half liter jugs of honey. And the flour was the one I was really curious um, about. Oh, oh my goodness. 200 pounds of flour in two months. 
Wow, that's crazy. We did do quite a bit more baking than we usually do um, because we were baking the hamburger buns and the hot dog buns and, uh, and those things we'll normally buy from the grocery store. I feel like we also did a lot more kind of treat baking just to make mm -hmm. the meals and yeah, stuff more kind of more fun. Sure. And the kids did lots of baking. So I think that's definitely above average, but that's still a lot. Oh my gosh. Anything else interesting? We won't take you guys through every single um, thing in the pantry because that would take a very long time. But what about for rice? How much rice did we use? Because I did really want to get through rice and beans. I know we used a ton of the canned beans. Um, and then I also canned all those, I canned 56 jars of beans, which used up the rest of the kidney beans we had in storage. We need to start eating this well. And yeah, we do. And um, we used quite a few black beans and I also canned those as well. So I'd be curious to know how many pounds of beans we used and how many pounds of rice we used. So we probably used around, I would say 20 pounds or so of beans. Um, and then I also canned 56 jars of beans. So those weren't consumed, but at least those were brought out of the dried bean storage and then put into jars uh, because it just makes them so much more convenient to use that way. Uh, we, I know we only used around 20 pounds of rice. It wasn't a ton. We do need to start incorporating rice. Yeah, we do, more rice. Like but we did though, we, we did, because mm -hmm. we used them in the bean and rice wraps. Especially, specifically brown rice though, like we should come up with two, a couple brown rice meals and... Uh, well, um, glory bowls, glory right? bowls are really good for brown rice. The kids don't like brown rice as much as they do um, white rice, so we tend to use more of the white rice. There's two bags of these big chocolate chips. There was two bags, so we used one? Well, there was three, we used two. <laughs> two we bags used two, of chocolate we chips. Like six of these we you might you might have helped with the chocolate chips just a little. <laughs> Only a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> just a little. So on that note, I have to share with you a pretty funny story about Dan. I'm gonna set the camera up somewhere. One sec. All right, so the pantry challenge is put on by Jessica from Three Rivers Homestead, and it goes from the beginning of January until the beginning of March. And she does this every single year, and I decided to join it this year because um, the number one thing that I was looking to, to figure out is how much food we would actually need if we couldn't go to the grocery store. So we try in our pantry to keep uh, a year's worth of staples for the most part, and in my canning pantry as well, a year's worth of that. But we do replenish uh, when we when things get low in our pantry throughout the year. So we didn't really know how much food it would take to sustain our family without going to the grocery store at all. So not only did we not go to the grocery store, but we also didn't eat out at all. We didn't get stuff at the corner store, fast food, anything like that, takeout or anything. So. Um, yeah, so that's basically kind of the premise of the pantry challenge. So we just came to the end of it and what are your thoughts, Dan? <laughs> what do you, what do you think about the pantry challenge? Some, some caveats to that though, just based on the comments <clears throat> that some people have had, everybody has their own rules for it. Oh yeah. That's and Jess, Jessica has, um, exceptions and other people have exceptions. I've heard lots of people say that they, they, they keep, do $20 a, month, a week for... Yeah, they do fresh fruit and vegetables mm -hmm. throughout so they don't um, like lack that in their diet. And I know Jessica does um, special, special dinners for her birthdays. They'll, they'll go out for the day or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, there's no hard and fast rules for it. So there's no way to like fail or succeed at it. It's just whatever you want to do. So what we are mostly looking to get out of it was using up some of our stock and like some of the stuff that was um, like rice and things that things were, that had been sitting on the pantry shelves for yeah, a long time like yeah. beans and rice and, yeah. Yeah. and also um, to actually put our because we we sort of roughly calculate in our in our mind what we think we'll need but to actually put it to the test and see what a family of like 10 people is actually doing if we don't buy anything mm -hmm. ever mm -hmm. I did have one exception, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> Which he calls a snack accident, My by snack the way. <laughs> <laughs> Do you um, want to tell that story? <laughs> sure. I, I, so I went to um, take the kids. So I'm also been being I've been intermittent fasting from 7:30 to 11:30, like 7:30 p.m. to 11:30 a.m. So we ate lunch, and then we went to town after. I had, the kids had a activity that night. 
And their activity started around six and I didn't bring any food. They were eating at their activity as part of it. It was included. And um, I also go to the gym. So I went to the gym and I did like a heavy workout. And then it was like 7.30 and I was like, if I don't eat, I'm not gonna be able to eat till the next day. So I thought, well, I'll just get some sushi and I just, you know, it'll be one time. <laughs> Cause it was rice, well, I have a it was rice and fish and seaweed. If, if nothing had happened, we'll tell you what happened in a second. Would you have told me? <laughs> That's the question I'm wondering. Would you have mentioned it? I'm 48. <laughs> I'm not eight. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay, so, so tell the people what happened. Anyways, um, <laughs> Carmen did come back and bite me a little bit because I was fine. And I, I went to bed and I woke up at 2.30 in the morning and my stomach was just cramped. And I got up and I, I don't get stomach sick hardly ever. <clears throat> and I... I went downstairs so I didn't wake up and anybody up but I started throwing up and, and just in, in the bathroom and it was awful for like three hours like really really awful. I didn't know this was happening at the time when I came back to bed yeah I had like 5 30 or yeah, so I so I got food poisoning from the sushi <laughs> <laughs> and then I had to confess to Chelsea because I so I rolled over because he climbed in the bed at 5 30 in the morning and I was like honey are you okay you know because he was just kind of moaning a little bit <laughs> so I got really sick and I was like oh my gosh you have the stomach flu that's terrible and then he just kind of paused for a minute he was like well I may have had some sushi last night. <laughs> and I couldn't help laughing. I mean, I wasn't laughing at him, but he was laughing too because it was just, it was kind of funny, <laughs> even though I felt so yeah. bad. But you were fine when you actually woke up in the morning, so it was definitely food poisoning mm -hmm. um, from yeah. the sushi. Well, I was totally fine by like noon the next day. Yeah, so that was that's basically throughout the entire two months the only time that mm -hmm. that there was any other kind of purchasing of food yeah. involved. And my other, my other sort of skirting uh, was I did sneak some of the chocolate chips out of the pantry. <laughs> <laughs> so the kids, one of the kids came up because they were making chocolate chip cookies or something, and they're like, "Who's been eating?" <laughs> so Jan was like, "Um, <laughs> full confession at that moment, which is so funny." <laughs> but outside of those. Um, those things so that being have. said like that's something i'll struggle with more than you going forward as i like i do like to eat out um well we should preface I'm that to, i'm gonna have to cut that down a lot a lot well we should preface it with that kind of leads into the things that we've decided to change with our shopping habits moving forward based on what we learned with the pantry challenge so we definitely saved a ton of money not eating out it was significant we also saved a lot of money not making so so many frequent um, stops to the grocery store because you know how it is you go into the grocery store with your list and then you buy five other things that weren't on your list so we saved significant money in those two areas and we would like to to carry that on moving forward so we haven't and really talked about that like what I would like to do if you're okay with it is yeah. just have the just go to the grocery store because my mind's better with kind of black and white thinking for fruits and vegetables only. Yeah, ex exactly. And That's dog what and I'm cat food. Too. I mean, we still buy our dog and cat food at the grocery store. Yeah. And um, outside of that, I would just like to keep our shopping to Costco if we could. Yeah, okay, it's it's doable for us. <coughs> we, uh, sorry. It's okay. Um, if we go to the if we go to Costco every couple of months and keep our pantry stocked up, we can actually just kind of use our pantry as a grocery store. And buying bulk for our family is significantly less expensive than buying um, not buying bulk at the grocery store. So yeah. So what were you, you were just talking about, like the fact that I'm I'm like lighting up and more excited mm -hmm. about food production. Don't I don't know where I left off. But anyway, that was um, I was something more awakened in me just seeing you light up about food production more just knowing that um, the reliance on what you're doing is more purposeful yeah like if we're if we're relying on it at an even greater level than we already were then it, it creates more purpose for you and it makes the work I do have a different kind of value for sure, mm -hmm. internally, so that, and I love that. That was a huge takeaway, very positive. That was probably the biggest takeaway for me, honestly. Mm -hmm. was seeing... And I was really, ex sorry, I didn't cut ahead. you off there. Mm -hmm. um, so is there anything else you can think of that we took from this that we might want to share? I kind of 
I feel like we've covered it and I've talked about it a lot in the videos over the last couple of months as sort of the things that that have come up for me but I feel I feel really good about it. I'm super glad we did it. It was definitely worth the experience. Uh, if you're if you've ever wanted to jump on something like that and give it a try, I would recommend it. Even if you just did it for a couple of weeks, depending on how you you normally shop or what kind of pantry you normally keep, I think it's a really cool experience, and you'll get a lot. Question out of for it. you: Did you come up with anything new that you want to create that you're like, boy, I wish I had that? I think learning to grow green or growing greens, getting into the habit of growing greens in the winter time. I think would be something that that was really the only thing during that entire period that I felt like re we really missed. I didn't feel like my recipes were that much different, except I was more conscious about using up certain ingredients like beans and rice and things like that. Um, and then a little bit more creative with fun food, just to make it more fun for the kids. And the kids but, made lots of stuff. Yeah, the kids baked all kinds The kids were actually very of, creative with the desserts. Yeah, and they also, <clears throat> um, I, I did ask them what their thoughts were, and they didn't really notice a huge difference outside of not ordering pizza, which they all missed, not ordering the pizza, and the fruit, like I mentioned mm -hmm. earlier. They really missed having fresh fruit. We had lots of freeze-dried fruit and frozen fruit and things like that throughout the whole pantry tour, so nutritionally it was fine, but just the the pleasure of being able to bite into a crunchy apple or a So for me, I would like, and this is something I think we can maybe focus on in the future, is, is making a bunch of bulk convenience type food. It's just not my wheelhouse to go into the kitchen and whip up six loaves of bread. And, <laughs> right. And then, and then make the mayonnaise for them and then... Is this coming off the back of when I was sick and I wasn't able to do, like you were just trying to... So I felt the loss of not being able to buy simple things oh, more, like, more than you would have but okay um, that makes sense so I would like to I mean we've used all of our large freezer meals yeah so we should make some more freezer meals we should definitely do that have, yeah. some, have some big freezer it buildings. is nice to have I'm not I'm not a huge uh, freezer meal person myself I actually find it almost just as fast to whip up something from scratch as to remember to pull things out of the freezer and let them thaw for 12 hours and then put them in the oven and that whole thing but um, but that's just because I have a lot of years of cooking like that and you don't have that same experience. So it's way more convenient for you to pull a lasagna out of the freezer or mm -hmm. something like that. If you guys have freezer meal recipes that you'd, you'd like to shoot this way and, and have. And then maybe I can convince Dan to do a video with me and we'll both no. cook. <laughs> Come I'll, on. I'll go in the kitchen. You guys send me six good freezer meals and we'll have a big day. Okay. <laughs> six good freezer meals, your, you guys. Your best freezer meals. Things that freeze really well and are amazing when you cook them. There you go. So I guess that's it, hey? That's it. I'm okay. Go back to work. Okay. Sounds good. All right. We are all stocked back up in the pantry, which feels great. And as I was looking through my canning shelves, I realized that I have used none of my enchilada sauce. So we are going to have chicken enchiladas for dinner tonight. I am going to make one batch of spicy because it has spicy enchilada sauce and one batch of mild. So I'm going to grab a whole bunch of jars of those. I'll probably use six of them. And then I am also going to grab some canned chicken because I don't have any chicken breast. I canned most of the chicken breasts off of the chickens that we raised last summer. So that's going to make for a super easy dinner. And then I'm also going to grab some black beans. So I'll make some black bean and chicken enchiladas, which my kids will be very happy about. I'm going to grab that, bring it upstairs, and then we will go outside and feed Cupcake. I'm only having to feed one of the lambs now, which is great because we were supplementing one of the other ones too, but he has figured out how to nurse from his very uncooperative mother, <laughs> which I'll show you when we get down there. Oh my gosh, it is so beautiful out. Wow. It was negative 21 when I came out to do chores this morning at around 7.30, and it is only negative eight right now. So it has warmed up a ton. I think I mentioned this when we were down in the pantry, but when Dan went to town, it was negative 30, no, 29 when he was driving, which is whew, cold. Oh, let me show you the bulldozer. So it's all painted. He ran it for a couple of hours yesterday and it worked great. So we're gonna be using this to do some logging around our property and clear out a bunch of the trees to create a serious fire guard between the farm and the forest up the mountain. I am so looking forward to that because every year it just seems to get drier and hotter here in the summertime and we always have fires. So I'll feel a lot better about it when the trees aren't quite so close to the house and to the barn. Can you see how the horse and the cow there are standing 
broadside to the sun. They always do that when it's sunny in the winter time. Hi there, Cupcake. Hello. My silly barn chickens. You gonna lay an egg there, Mama? Well, hello, honey. I think you two could probably go outside, hey? Oh, we're gonna have to thaw out your bucket of water again. Hi. All right, sweetheart. Do you wanna come out and have your bottle? <laughs> oh, <Whoa>, careful. <laughs> you silly girl. I think we can probably wean you from the bottles. You look so fat and healthy, huh? See how you'll do with just your mama. Hi, buddy. How are you? <laughs> Does she smell good? <laughs> are you cleaning her off? Good boy. Good boy, Oki. I'm gonna show you one of the white one's legs over there, but his legs are all curly, long hair. Really cute. Yeah. Oh, Let's put you back in with him. Yeah. Come on. Good girl. Ugh. There you go. Oaks. Yeah. Like, can you see how fuzzy they are? <laughs> There's a lot of that that goes down on around here but he looks nice and fat and healthy. So this boy over here has figured out how to nurse from his mama when she is laying down. <laughs> because she still is having none of it. Hi, Nala. Oakley, oh, you're such a good boy. What are you doing, honey? Uh, my plan at this point is I am going to keep all of these mamas and babies in the barn for the, probably another week until the weather shifts and we start getting warmer weather and then I'm gonna put everybody outside and I think that uh, all these babies are strong enough and know how to get milk even when their mamas are just laying down. <laughs> Look at this. There is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. He has figured out how to nurse with his mama laying down. So they have a good enough start at this point that I think they'll be just fine and I think everyone's gonna be happy to get outside and get some sunshine. Look at those cuties. Ah. You're so sweet. I am so happy with how great the lambs are looking. It's a big relief. There is Zinnia over there. So she's the one that lost her lamb. She has had no problem drying up her milk, which is great. So I didn't have to deal with mastitis or anything like that. And she is happy out there and doing well. So I do have some decisions to make at this point about um, breeding again and who I'm gonna breed, but I'm not gonna worry about that right now. I'm gonna give it a few weeks before I make any decisions about my breeding plans moving forward. Look at this little barnyard. We have chickens, kitty, pigs in the background, and Oakley standing watch. Being around animals really does kind of calm down my central nervous system. It brings me a lot of peace. So back up to the house now to make some chicken enchiladas. This recipe is what I would call pantry fast food. So it's going to take us probably 10 minutes to put it together and it's going to be very delicious. So we're going to use canned chicken, canned black beans, and canned enchilada sauce. And then I have just grated up some cheese that we are going to add to this as well. So first thing I'm going to do is rinse off my beans and then I am going to drain out the juice from my chicken and give that to my dogs. So I'm just going to divide up the beans and the chicken between these two bowls I have here because I'm going to make a spicy enchilada and a mild enchilada for my kids. Some love heat, some not so much. Dan's out running the bulldozer out there. He does love machines. So we'll go spicy and not spicy. 
It smells so good. Enchilada sauce is one thing that I, well, <laughs> one of many things <laughs> that I love to can. I just started canning it a couple years ago. So I think we'll add a little bit more. Mix in a little bit of cheese. So I have a bunch of tortillas here. And now we're just going to wrap them up and put them in our trays. So now we'll just fill them up. I'm gonna make a Caesar salad to go on the side, just a super easy one with romaine lettuce and croutons and bacon bits. And I don't think I have any Parmesan cheese but just a simple salad. Wow, I divided up that filling pretty much perfectly for both of these trays. So I am just going to add um, some more sauce to the top of these. Just a little. And into the oven at 350 degrees until bubbly and golden. My goodness, that is delicious. If you are looking for some things to start canning and you like enchiladas, I highly recommend enchilada sauce and canned chicken and canned beans because this could not be easier and it is absolutely delicious. My kids are going to be so happy. And this salad, super easy, just thrown together. I use some of that homemade ranch dressing that I made in the last video. So really, really delicious. I hope that you all enjoyed today's video and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.